Hi, I'm Frank Blome. I'm the CEO of Project Wizards and today I would like to show you Merlin Project. Let's have a look. To get a little content, we have since the very last version a new intelligent assistant. And this is basically a tool which creates us um, a template of a new project with a little help from ChatGPT. Here's how it works. We describe what we want to have or want to do in our project. We define the size of the project and then create or in better words, we let it create by Merlin project. And on the top left hand side, you see what the actual assistant or what the intelligent assistant is actually doing. Simply, we are sending the information to ChatGPT and ChatGPT sends us something back. And from that, we create activities, we create durations, we create resources, we connect them by the dependencies or with the dependencies. And with some magic, we have a new project in our window. By the way, window, that's a very important thing. Um, in Merlin project, everything runs within one window. You don't have to learn multiple dialogues or things like that. You don't need it. Just one window, very easy. Okay, we look into that. What do we have here on the screen now? We have the window I just talked about. We have a nice toolbar. You know the thing with the good citizen of the Macintosh environment. We have then the dark gray area, which is basically our working area. And this working area can be switched to multiple views and we call this view types or project views. And with the view types, we deliver a number of different types like work breakdown structure, net plan, resources, assignments, reports, and the attachments. And each view type has multiple project views. Right off the box, you don't have to create it, but you can if you want. Okay, what else? We have, of course, our working area, which is basically the bright area, which I just highlighted. And whenever you select something in the working area, you see on the right hand side, the inspector, which shows all the details. So far, so easy. What else have we got created by the intelligence assistant? For example, a number of resources you know, someone has to do the work. And we can use this little icon here to show a pop-up of the resource or a pop-up filled with the resources. Or we go right into the view configuration or the view type and see all the created resources. Of course, you can create your own resources. You don't have completely rely on the stuff which was created by the AI. We have the insert menu or we have the plus button to create new stuff. And this is the chance for Mickey Mouse to appear in our project. The other way to create resources is by drag and drop out of the address book. Just grab a card, drag it into the resources window. And as soon as you have created here, you can switch back to for example, our work breakdown structure. And you see it here is our Mickey Mouse. You can grab it and drag it onto an activity in order to assign a second person to that. What else do we have in terms of project views? A very flexible and wide range of um, view types is the net plan view. Sometimes, you need a different view on your project and therefore we have implemented other opportunities. For example, within the net plan category, we have the mind map. And this mind map is exactly what the name says, a mind map of your project. You see all the different branches and leaves and you can easily reorder them you can add new faces, you can add new leaves. And the good thing, whatever you do here in the mind map goes right away into your work breakdown structure. Next step, 
are the costs. We want to know how much the project will be. And for that, we go into the resources and give each resource a price. Very easy. Let's do it. We go into the resources and we see here again each resource. And we have a dedicated tab, the costs, for the selected resource. I make it easy now. I select all the resources and give everyone a price of 100 euro per hour. Now we have assigned the cost to each of our resources. We can go back into the work breakdown structure, select the first line in our project, so-called the project line, and go here on the finance tab. And under the sub tab balance, we see immediately how much the project will be. And that's a very nice feature. Without any additional work, we see right away what, based on the approximately 100 euro per hour, the whole project will be. After the planning phase, we have the execution of a project. I don't know if that's the case as it is for us, but planning and executing a project sometimes are complete different universes. You may know that. Here we are to handle that. I switch to a dedicated project view and this is for example in our case the plan and actual compersion based on time and we see the whole project as it is planned now. And here for example we are starting with the planning phase and the very first activity meaning defining website objectives, should start it on October the 14th. But for whatever reason, it starts late. So we go to the tab of the actual values and you see right away the field actual start. And here we can open our mini calendar and just select the date where it really starts. So not on the 14th as scheduled, but on the 21st. And you see immediately on the project plan two bars coming up. First, it's a series of gray bars, which are our planned values. And then we have colored bars. And these colored bars are a mixture of our actual values and expected values. So very important, we have three series of values, the planned values, which is what you gave the project in order to calculate, the actual values, which the name says, and the expected values, which is a combination of planned and actual values. Yeah, and here we see right away our gap, but there is even more. Let's imagine the first activity is done, so we click easily the 100% button, done. For the next activity, we realize we need longer than expected. Expected was, we see it here in planned or expected, an activity of three hours. For whatever reason, we would say we have done three hours, but we need some other 20 hours. And this is what happens now. The bar extends and shows on the left hand side the time which is actually done and the lighter color shows what work what amount of work is remaining and over this technique so with the fields complete actual work and remaining work you can set up basically every project situation with your activities and the actual work Okay, next step is reporting. You know, sometimes you have to explain your project. Let's see how it works. As discussed before, in Merlin project, we have a dedicated report type. And within these reports, we deliver a couple of presets, which you can use out of the box. This, for example, shows all the ongoing activities, milestones, and what happened or what should happen this week. Actually, nothing. 
Let's see what else we do have. We have something with uh, documentation which shows all the um, activities and if available the notes about that. But what I like to do now is I would like to create a dedicated report for us because that's the thing. You know the typical questions are I need to have a um, gun chart in our report and things like that. Let's do it. So we go back to the status compact report and imagine that as a simple blank piece of paper. Of course it's not blank, we have some content here, but we can select that and press enter and it disappears. Actually it really disappears, it, it's not that it gets deleted, that's a very important thing. So, in order to get new modules or blocks on our piece of paper, I use the plus button and you see here a number of different modules which you can use right off the box. Here, for example, is our project view. Select that, select it here and here we are with a project plan. And this is a very easy way how you can create different types of reports. And of course you can store this report and use it over and over again. But it's not using, but sometimes you want to export it and send it to whoever. Merlin Project does have a wide range of exporting capabilities. Let's have a look at some of them. First of all, we open the menu item export and you see a long list of different export types. First of all, I'd like to use an image because an image is not only um, PNG, JPEG or whatever kind of image, but also a PDF. And this exports our current view, in this case the status compact report, as a PDF file. But you can also use HTML as an export format. And here we have a fantastic situation for you in order to keep your customers who are not users of Merlin Project in the loop. Just export your project as HTML, put it on an FTP server and give the customer access to that file and he is absolutely informed about your project. Very nice thing. But other things can, can be exported as well. For example, MS Project. You know, with a Mac we are not alone on this world and sometimes you have to talk with the, no, I don't say the word enemy, but you know what I mean. And MS Project is widely used on Windows. Just select the export format, click on export and you're done. And that easy it is for all the different kinds of export formats. Okay, so far for this video, I hope you get a first nice impression of Merlin Project and your next step should be go to the website projectwizards.net and get a copy of Merlin Project. We have a trial version which is valid for 30 days. Then you are very welcome to be a subscriber for our nice software. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Cheers.